destiny being on top of the division, but now they need help and they need to win some ball games, and especially at home. They came off that road trip 0-4 after winning seven. Seven foot one center. Not often does Justin Patton look up to anybody. <laughs> a couple of seven footers out there. We're in for a treat here tonight watching these two go at it. And here's the opening tip. It's presented by High V and it's won by the Iowa Wolves. Now we'll Trimble into the front court for the first time tonight. And quickly they look for Anthony Brown on a little ISO play. Now Patton comes with a ball screen. Fadeaway jumper, no good. And taken off the rim, Emil Jefferson comes away with the offensive board. No surprise there, Mr. Double-Double. Iowa will have another crack at it here on their opening possession. Good bounce pass for Patton. And a lot of con contact and nothing called there. Patton missed in close, and then the ball just trickled out of bounds off of Patton, so it goes back to... RGV for the first time. Yeah. Emil, leading rebounder in the G League. 13 rebounds a game. Nearly three re rebounds better than anybody else so far this season. Here's Anawaku on a handoff for Brown. Back to Anawaku for the two-hand flush. A nice set there by the Vipers to start things off. Yeah, Justin got caught flat-footed there on that backdoor cut. Man beat him to the backside. Trimble on a pull-up left wing off the back of the iron. No good. Rebound for the seven-foot-one center, Chi. And here we go. Five and seconds. Roten <laughs> all the way down the left side of the lane, uncontested for the lane. It's 4-0 Vipers. That's their game. I mean, they get that rebound, they're gone. And if you don't get back, they're going to take it all the way to the rim. And that's what they did right there, Rio Grande Valley. Very good at that. Iowa's going to have to adapt to that. Roten with some really good ball pressure out front. Now Ooh. Patton has it. Stolen away into the hands of Chi. He throws it off the hand of Brown, but the Vipers get it back. And now Chi on a back pass for Roten. They'll reset things. Julian Lewis with it up top. Lewis going to drive it. Kicks to the corner. Chi's three-pointer up and no good. Chi acting like he's a guard out there. He likes that guard play a little bit. Well, they'll, they'll hide guys in the corner, and they like those corner threes in years past for the Vipers. Here's Patton. He goes right by Chi, and Patton with a nice left-hand lay-in. That breaks the ice right there. Now get back and play some defense here. At least the half-court defense is not the problem. Nope, this is the problem. Yeah. And Roten all the way to the rim. He's fouled by the big man, Justin Patton. He picks up his first personal. So Roten will be headed to the line to shoot two. Again, the Wolves been on the road for four straight games back tonight, but won't be back until Sunday, March 4th against the Erie Bayhawks. That's also Faith and Family presented by Service Legends with a post-game concert. So come on and get your tickets for that game. There's also Bordenero's Mill Deal available, $60 for four tickets, four slices of pizza, and four bottles of soda. Go to IAWolves.com and follow us and like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Snapchat, all at IAWolves. Roten not able to connect on the first of two free throws. And the second one up, also no good, but Anawaku. <laughs> they say a double lane violation, so they'll jump it up at center court. Wow. It was Emil Jefferson and Anawaku both in the lane early after Roten missed his second free throw. So let's see who has to jump here. I think that's the discussion. Is it. I don't think it the matters. The two guys with the lane violation. Oh, really? And they say it is. Okay. Which to me seems like That's kind of an odd rule. Yeah, why would you care? It's a lane violation. So they jump it up at center court and Jefferson skies and taps it back for Patton who hands it to Trimble. Let's see if Iowa can even things up here at four. Just a little over two minutes gone by. Anthony Brown double teamed. And now Patton is going to be fouled by Anawaku as he put it on the floor. Yeah, Anawaku with a good hook in the arm that time as Patton tried to get by. He got caught with his arm in the cookie jar, and so personal foul picked up. The Anthony Early and Hartenstein, along with a well-known player around here, Monte Morris, all three back with their respective NBA clubs. Listed on the roster tonight as Trimble lays it in to tie things at four, but... Unfortunately for us, Tony, we don't get to see Monte again. No, he had a real nice game here earlier this season when the Vipers took care of business. And evidently a lot of Cyclone fans knew he wasn't going to be here because we don't see a lot of Cyclone fans in the house tonight. Here's Julian Lewis spotting up for a three off the mark, no good. And Emil Jefferson comes away with another rebound. 
Here's Trimble. Iowa not as quick to get into. Oh, nice pass underneath for Emil Jefferson, but he's rooted out of there by Anawaku. Bounce pass for Patton. Reverse layup with the left hand is good. That wasn't pretty, but no, it worked. <laughs> it was not pretty. <laughs> there was that all will, kinds of bad things. That one good thing happened in the that basket. Will, that will not make the highlight reel, and neither will the transition defense so far by Iowa as they give up another foul at the rim to Roten, who is just driving it hard. Yeah. And, and I mean, Rio Grande Valley makes you play this way, and if you are not going to get back in transition, they will just continue to pound you. Well, this is a game where I, I see Wes Washburn playing some extended minutes because of his ability to stay in front of the ball. That's, Real, that's one thing he excels at, maybe more so than Trimble, as you see Trimble no match for Roten. Trimble with that lateral quickness and stay in front of the ball. Needs to be improved a little bit. He does so many things well, but... Free throw shooting is not one of them. <laughs> no, Roten. 0 for 4 from the line. How about that? Yeah. Rio Grande won 124 to 114 on January 24th and won here up by the score. I mean, at Rio Grande, 119 to 101. So two games so far, two Ws for Rio Grande Valley against the Iowa Wolves. Well, it's Iowa on top here early, 6-4. Neither team playing extremely well as of the first Looks like three post, and a half minutes. Post-All-Star game rust is <laughs> definitely not fluid right now. Oh, beautiful spin move by Patton. Goes Boy. right around Chi. He wanted the foul, and there might have been a little bit of contact at the high shoulder there, but nothing called. Well, Chi's seven foot one, but... Boy, what do they list him at? 218 pounds, and that's probably generous. And there's a ball off the leg of Chi. Jefferson... Comes away with it. He's going to push it down the left side of the floor. Drives right at Chi. Lays it up off the glass. No, but the foul. And I like that Jefferson attacked that time. And nobody was getting back with him. And he had one-on-one -on -one with Chi. So he took it right to him. And he's able to draw the personal foul. Well, one of the great sponsors of Iowa Wolves basketball has been the Iowa Clinic. They have 250 physicians and health care providers practicing in 40 specialties. Proud to be Central Iowa's largest independent physician-owned multi-specialty group. Experience the Iowa Clinic and learn more at iowaclinic.com. Again, another proud sponsor of Iowa Wolves basketball trying to snap that four-game losing streak tonight here in Wells Fargo Arena. And not dip below the 500 mark, which they have fought so hard to get above. Right around that January 1st time frame. Both free throws good for Jefferson and Iowa on a little 8-0 run here. They lead at 10-4 on Oahu. Hands for Roten. Now it's Brown. Brown into the paint. Kicks it back for Anawaku. Jump shot on the way. Off the mark. No good. And out of bounds off of Zou Chi. Well, except for those baskets at the rim uh, on, on the fast breaks after the baskets, their shooting doesn't look too well so far. Rio Grande, that was a clanker off the side rim. That wasn't even close. Well, the one thing Rio Grande Valley doesn't have that they've had in games past is Anthony Brown knocks down a jumper and a timeout on the floor. A lot of their offensive production they've relied on this year, not, not in the uniform tonight. So timeout on the floor. So Roten with it in the backcourt, uncontested across the timeline. Chris Walker is checked in along with R.J. Hunter. And here's Brown on a left wing three. Shot up, no good. Now it's Brown quickly down floor. Back for Trimble and they reset things. I wouldn't call it a fast start, but it's good to see Iowa up for a change instead of always seeming like they have to dig out of a hole early in ball games Tonight they get that quick start here at 12-4. That's a foul. And <laughs> Roten reached in as Brown went airborne. So let's see if that's two shots. And they say a side out. He, yeah. he, he left the ground, so really hard to tell whether that was going to be a shot attempt or not. Anthony Brown tried to sell it as such. Yeah, he, I think he was passing, but I he did too. try to sell it. Oh, nice great inbound. pass for oh. Bryson. Bryson missed the easy bunny. I think that pass surprised everyone. Patton, though, with a steal. Great. Oh, great. Pass ahead. Good hands by Brown. Lays it off for Jefferson with a two-hand flush. That's a crowd pleaser right there. That is sweet Georgia Brown music right there. Well, great defensive play. Good hands by Brown to receive the outlet pass and then the nice no-look dish. Markel, I believe that was Markel Brown at once yes. with a little lay-in underneath. That broke that 
10-0 run by the Wolves here to, to grab that 10-point lead, now down to 8. 14-6 to six now. Mm, sloppy. Yeah, Patton and Jefferson standing right next to one another. Oh, good bounce pass. Oh, look at Bryson. Oh! Oh, oh, oh. Bryson mishandled the bounce pass and went caroming up towards the rim. He almost threw an alley-oop to himself, basically. And there's a loose ball on the floor as Roten lost it. And it's Iowa back the other way. Anthony Brown for three right wing. Off the mark, no good. And a rebound stolen away by Jefferson. And what do we got? A whistle. And... Oh, they're well, going to the reset the shot clock to 11. I think no possession, I guess they're calling well, that. I, I, I thought he did. I thought the Vipers had possession, and then Jefferson stole it away from behind. We had our first look at Perry Jones in quite a while here at Wells Fargo. So 11 seconds on the shot clock. And in it goes for Patton. I think Patton thought there was one second, not 11. Oh, and Bryson went airborne. Tried to tip it in. I believe Patton was unaware of what the shot clock yeah, actually I, said. Yeah, you could tell there was confusion because when you looked over here, um, Emil Jefferson was confused and then he held it across, but it was a little too little too late. I don't think Patton ever got the message. So not, not a good set there after the uh, steal. <laughs> well, it's a 16-6 lead for Iowa, but they've made a few mistakes here. They made this a half-court game instead of the breakaway because they've been making baskets. So Here's Victor from the left wing wow, three, way off the mark. Didn't even draw iron. Tonight. Now it's Bryson down the left side. Michael backs his defender down. Trimble now, top of the key, three off the mark. High up for the rebound, Kyle Davis, the six-foot point guard. Victor through the lane, wild shot, front rimmed it, no good. <laughs> But an offensive rebound and then a three ball from the left corner by Markel Brown. So Iowa a little sloppy on the boards there and the Vipers take advantage with some second chance points. Trimble back pass for Perry Jones. Now it's Anthony Brown driving at baseline. Left hand layup off the glass and in. Good use of his body to screen off the defender and then use the glass by Anthony Brown. And skip pass to the left wing. Now up top it goes Davis. Davis drops it back to walk, and he travels. Again, no Quentin Chivas tonight serving the uh, two-game suspension, so he's not a lat round uh, for the Iowa Wolves as Elijah Millsap checks in for Michael Bryson. And congratulations to Michael Bryson, the co-dunk contest winner for the G League at the NBA All-Star break. No surprise there. No. I was surprised he was a co. I thought he should have been by himself. Here's Trimble. Left wing with a ball screen. Now they look inside for Perry Jones. Perry's going to go to work on the... And there's a foul, I believe. They get back, I think, Davis, or was it... 25. Craig yeah. Victor from behind. Yeah. It was Victor. Yeah, he tomahawk chopped Yeah, him. <laughs> he was coming in hard for the block shot and got a piece of Perry Jones' arm. Well, another good sponsor of Iowa Wolves basketball is Mid-American Energy, who can help you recycle old working fridges, room air conditioners, and freezers. For more energy savings tips, visit midamericanenergy.com. And Fast Signs are more than fast and more than signs. Visit fastsigns.com or find them at 1791 80, Northwest 86th Street in Clive. Two more great sponsors of Wolves basketball. Ooh, free throws have not been pretty either way. Perry Jones misses a couple. Perry just coming back after a, a long stint on the IR. And right by Elijah Millsap goes Markel Brown for the lay-in. And Elijah gave him the left side, and he took advantage of it instead of staying squared up. You can hear Coach Scott Roth yelling, square up, square up, you're by yourself, and not paying attention, and Coach knows what he was talking about. Trimble for three, left side, no. Rebound, Millsap lays it up and in. Good job by Millsap there to get himself in position. Right wing, now top of the key for Victor. They swing it around into the corner, and a three on the way, no good, but a foul. Millsap reached in at the wrong time as Markel Brown elevated for the three. Well, Wes Washman's going to make his first appearance of the game here for the Iowa Wolves in this one. As he checks into the scorer's table, we'll have to wait to the free throw here. 
So the first free throw by Brown up and in. Under three timeouts going to be coming here shortly. The next dead ball, I guess. Typically at the under three minute mark, they'll mm -hmm. have the second media timeout. Brown played his college basketball at Oklahoma State. Makes the second. Third free throw on the way. Wes Washburn will check in. Trimble will grab a seat. I was in a lot better as far as start from the uh, fast breaks, but most of that's because they've been making baskets and taking that away from the Vipers. So, so Markel Brown with his third free throw. He goes three for three at the line. Takes advantage of that foul. So it's a six-point lead for Iowa, 20 to 14, as we near the three-minute mark. Mm. Washman gives it off for Millsap. Now Elijah. Some confusion, perhaps. Now they isolate Anthony Brown on the left wing. Brown leans in, shoots, and scores. That was a tough shot. Well defended. Trying to draw the foul. Didn't, but still hung in there. And that was, was great defense finish. by Markel Brown. Yes. Anthony Brown has a really good ISO game. Here's Brown on a three from the corner. It's good. Anthony got there too late. Well, he kind quick of gambled release. for the steal to get into that passing lane. That was a quick release by Markel oh, Brown, absolutely. though. He caught and shot. Brown's going to score a lot of points tonight. Not a lot of shooters out there. Here's Perry Jones. Tough floater. Gets it to fall. How about that soft touch? Good pressure by Emil Jefferson in the backcourt. Nearly forced a turnover. Now Markel it's Davis. Already with 13 of the Vipers, 17 points in this one. So. Here's Walker. Oh, great. Swatted block. away by Perry Jones. How about the link there? Here's Jefferson. Gave it off for Jones. Stolen away and down on the other end. It's an easy lay-in for Chris Walker. Yeah. So the lead back to five. 24-19 at the two-minute mark here first quarter. Oh. <laughs> Almost a backdoor play there to Millsap. Millsap defended by Hunter on the right wing. And Hunter... He'll get physical with you. Hunter likes to get right up there chest to chest. He was kind of bouncing off as Sean Williams checks in the ball game. Timeout on the floor. We'll step away. game, And that's what Rio Grande has going right now. Markel Brown doesn't do what he's doing, which is four out of five shooting from the field, two of three from three, and three of three from the free throw line. They are in big trouble right now. Well, with some of the departures of the NBA assignment players, Markel Brown's going to have to shoulder the load in the scoring column tonight. Can Rio Grande comes in a game and a half behind Austin for the lead in the Southwest Division. Austin at 24 and 15. Texas at 23 and 16. Rio Grande at 23 and 17. Iowa a game and a half back in the Midwest Division behind Sioux Falls who leads the way at 20 and 17. And there's a turnover on the first possession out of the timeout for RGV. Kyle Davis threw it away as he was trying to get it to Markel Brown on the right wing. So a seven-point lead in the basketball here for the Wolves. Marquise Moore is going to check in with the next dead ball. Here's Patton on a high post flash. Patton going to go to work. Spin move. Oh. Nice dish to Anthony Brown cutting backside for the two-hand flush. And that's twice he's done that little wrap around with those long arms. You're not going to get to him. He almost handed it off to Anthony Brown with that sweeping pass. Here's Anthony Brown. Zo T for three. Off the mark, no good. I'll settle for a seven-footer shooting from there all the time. <laughs> Until he starts making them. And a good bounce pass, but Millsap not able to hang on. Now Brown on the other end. Oh, tough runner there by Markel Brown. Washman kept his hands away, didn't foul. But Brown with a strong move to make it 15 points here in the first quarter. Again, a missed shot at one end in less than five seconds for a bucket at the other end. Well, there's a turnover, and the ball ends up in the sixth row behind us. <laughs> see if they Nobody. can re retrieve the basketball. Might have a little ketchup on it. <laughs> Maybe some popcorn grease. <laughs> oh, Johnny. Oh, man, it, w it went through the hands of like five or six spectators. Those fans are not going to drop their beers, Johnny, for the basketball. Listen. Hey, don't blame them. Here's Lewis on a back pass for Hunter. Hunter on a drive. Skip pass Davis. Left-handed three on the way. Off the mark, no good. And knocked out of bounds. They say last touch by Iowa. That was knocked out of Sean Williams' hands by... 
she it looked like, but I guess they're going to give it to Rio Grande Valley from my spot from cross court. I, maybe I missed it, but there's Zochi catching it out of the inbounds. Now Davis on a bounce pass on Owaku and a foul on Sean Williams. And it was before the shot. It'll be a side out. One thing watching Zochi, he likes to stand beyond the arc. He doesn't do much in the paint move stuff, so you don't have to worry about him too much when you're gardening. You can kind of lay off and help out somewhere. And that's what I was doing right now. And Millsap whistled for a hold away from the ball. Him and R.J. Hunter have been kind of banging each other around. R.J. got called at one end, now Millsap at the other end. But for Millsap, he picks up his second personal foul. So Hunter will step to the line to shoot a pair. Played his college ball at Georgia State. What was that? Saw all his about? dad on the. Uh, saw his dad on television the other night. They were taking on Georgia Southern. Well, I don't understand that R.J. took a free throw shot before the free throw shot was given to him. They, now he gets his, makes a first of two. But why did that happen? Patton was still trying to get in the spot. He was crossing the lane while R.J. shot. It's a practice shot, Tony. <laughs> yeah. Second one up and good. So after missing the first four, the Vipers starting to make those charity stripe shots. Then lead back to five. 28-23, the Wolves on top of the Vipers. 12 seconds to go here in the quarter. There's Washman. Washman on a hard <laughs> drive. Washman is fouled from behind by Davis. Oh, I thought he was going to throw that one down. So Wes Washman will step to the line to shoot two. That was poor defense, so I mean. Well, Washman's such an explosive player, even with the basketball. Tough to stay in front of, and Davis and no, found that out. And nobody helping, though. I mean, it was just like the lane just opened up. Davis got beat by a step, and there was nobody there for the Vipers to help their teammate out. That was too easy. Wes Washman played his ball. About two hours northeast of here in Cedar Falls. Second free throw up and good. Former UNI Panther. Here's Davis racing down the left side. Goes airborne and swatted away by Patton. Yeah. Patton was just standing there waiting, thinking there's no way he's going to shoot this, is he? And with point three to go on the clock, basically no chance to get a shot off. I mean, it's throw it up and tip it up there toward the rim if you can do that. Yeah, it cannot be a catch and shoot here. It's got to be a tap to the rim. No, that won't count. It wouldn't count anyway. So there's the end of the first quarter. The Iowa Wolves put a 30 spot up. Share how you are improving your community using hashtag NBA Voices. All right, first quarter statistics. The Wolves 57% from the field as the leader of the way was Anthony Brown with eight and Justin Patton at six. 42% from the field for the Vipers led by Markel Brown in 15. And a quick bucket by R.J. Hunter to start things off here in the second quarter. The lead five now, 30 to 25. Sean Williams has it. Finds Patton on the right elbow. And Patton faces up on Anawaku and knocks down the 15-footer. Well, that's about as active a first half as I've seen from Justin Patton. Just gradual growth here so far in this first season. He's had his moments, but this has been pretty consistent here in the opening quarter. He's just really been aggressive offensively and defensively tonight. Here's Davis. Three ball on the way. Off the mark, no good. Well contested. Here comes Marquise Moore. Gives it off for Patton. Back to Moore. Marquise gets into the lane. Kicks it back for Millsap. Williams finds Moore along the baseline. Patton stepped on the sideline before oh. knocking down the three, so out of um, bounds, a turnover. Good ball movement by Iowa. One thing about Marquise Moore, he gets in those land of the Giants in the paint, and he feels comfortable. <laughs> he knows how to get that ball to the right spot. That was a perfect example of that. Just couldn't finish because of the step out of bounds by Patton. Well, there's a nice back cut and a lay in there by Julian Lewis. Boy, they love to spread you out and cut to the basket. Let's see who's going to pick up the scoring here with Brown out right now for Rio Grande Valley because he was the bulk of it in the first. And Hunter all over Millsap away from the ball. And yeah, them two have really gotten after each other. They have been bumping chess. There's Davis. And 
Anuaku gets position and lays it up and in. Patton got there just a split second late. Yeah, he had his back turned to that back pass that time and got beat on the baseline, so. Washburn on a hard drive back to Williams. Williams shot fake, gets around Chi, bounce pass. He's got to be, I mean, he hasn't had many of those big games because of his minutes, and that's a, qu that's a lot of points here early for Justin Patton. There's Hunter. Drops it back for Chi. Couldn't handle it, but it was ran down by Julian Lewis. Lewis had it poked away, but finds Davis in the corner three on the way. No good. Oh, here we Outlet go. Pass for Millsap. Elijah is going to contest. Oh, nice. R.J. Hunter looked to be in a good spot defensively, but the Euro step by Millsap gets the bucket and the foul. So Elijah Millsap will go to the line to shoot one. Uh, these first three plus minutes and our two and a half minutes in the second quarter are as quality minutes as Justin Patton's played all season. Period. Well, that outlet pass wow. was tremendous. Or, and then in the first quarter, a couple of those wraparounds. He really looks like he is in tune tonight. He, I like the way he's playing. Here's Roten across the timeline. Hunter through the lane. Hunter left it short, no good. Well contested by Millsap. Now it's Washman. Back pass for Patton. He'll shoot the three top of the key. No good. Boy, that would have been nice. That was a heat check, though. I liked it. I really did like it. Thought it was going. Just a little short. There's Rote. Oh, walk. And they say a Ooh, foul. Reach Washburn. in on Washburn. Perry Jones checks in. The Iowa Clinic checks in as another great sponsor owned by doctors living and working in our community. Why does it matter? Because decisions about your health care are determined by you and your doctor, not a large corporate entity. Learn more at iowaclinic.com, another proud sponsor of Wolves Basketball. And good defense there. Ooh, thought that might go to Iowa. It was off Washburn out of bounds. Again, they tried that backdoor cut. If there's a player on the floor, though, aware of where the ball is at all times, it's Wes Washburn. Yeah. And Roten airballs a three, and they've got Millsap. Oh, boy, they missed him. But now it's Moore through the lane, got the bucket, and oh, wow. they they're going to say an offensive yeah. foul. <laughs> Marquise Moore. <laughs> Look at the smile on one of the, the Vipers. Julian, Julian Lewis, Lewis who, picked, who drew the foul, he's even smiling. He said, yeah, that wasn't even close. That was a no call more than anything. Well, there was... So much contact, though, that he almost had to call something, but I, I don't know that Lewis had his feet set. No. Here's Walker over to Hunter. Hunter had it knocked away by Millsap. Again, those two going at it. And he'll fire a three top of the key off the mark, no good. And Moore is fouled by Hunter at midcourt. Hunter's one of those guys, he's always complaining. Yeah. I mean... He's aggressive. He's think. intense. He's one of those intense players. And he thought he had a tie up at midcourt. It, it, there was a little bit of contact. He got a lot of basketball, though. Yeah, too. he did get a lot of basketball. I can understand his little bit of a contest on that. 39 29. Iowa's lead is 10. Here's Elijah Millsap on a skip pass for Trimble. Stolen away off of. Neither player knew where the ball was. It went off the hands of R.J. Hunter, but it went behind him. And by the time he realized it was there, it had touched the sideline. So uh, Both teams have been sloppier in the first half. There were 11 turnovers by the two teams combined in the opening quarter, and they're trying to match that number here in the second quarter already. Ooh. There's Trimble. They miss the back door. They get Trimble instead, and he can't knock down the three. Rebound by Chi. Roten gives it off for Lewis. Lewis drives it. Now Chi sets his feet. Three on the way. No good. Rebound. Emil Jefferson. Seven for him. All of the first shots half. are from beyond the arc so far. All of them. Here's Millsap. Left side it goes. Now back to Marquise Moore. Millsap will line up a three left wing. No good. Jefferson with his eighth rebound of the half. Now Perry sets his feet, shot fake, got him in the air. Now Jefferson has his shot swatted away. Five on the shot clock, no need to panic. Oh, Millsap lost the handle. Oh, that's a walk right there. Oh my goodness. There's Walker with a two-hand flush. 
oh. Elter Skelter down the floor and maybe got away with a travel. Oh, I think Walker carried the ball for three steps above his shoulder before he brought it down the dribble. He lived up to his name there, you said. <laughs> yeah. And a foul, and I believe it's Roten trying to root out. Oh, no, that was Lewis trying to get Perry Jones out of the lane, giving up about eight inches there. And no wonder it only takes about five seconds to get down court. <laughs> it took about two for Walker that time. <laughs> 7.09 to go here in the first half. 39-31. The Wolves lead it. Iowa shot the ball pretty well, but they've been a little sloppy at times with the ball. And there's a block by Chi. Swatted Perry Jones. Quickly down floor. It's a three from the left wing by Markel Brown. Who else? Contested three. Brown got Anthony Brown got there, but Markel's just been solid tonight. 17 game high points for Markel. And this has not been a pretty game, but both teams are really going after each other pretty hard. And the rest are letting them play through some of that for the most part. Millsap from downtown. Front rim no good. Brown with the rebound. Markel gets it back, lets a right wing three go. That one off the mark. Didn't quite have his feet underneath him there. Now it's Anthony Brown. Stops, pops three, no good. And knocked out of bounds by Millsap. It'll go back to the Vipers. And a timeout on the floor. 6-13 to go here in the first half. It's a five-point lead for the Iowa Wolves. The Vipers with a 5-0 run, though. 39-34, Wolves lead the Vipers. More Wolves basketball after this break. Yeah. In this league, we're not okay with... Bill Jefferson, and off the bench, Elijah Millsap has added seven. And Chi thought about another three. This time puts it on the floor and oh. lays it up and in. Goes by Perry Jones. Well, that's a way to keep teams honest because he was shooting everything from three. That time, he finally drove to the rim. She has, was 0 for 3 from the field, all from downtown until that layup. And a nice drive to the basket by Perry Jones. Finishes off the window. 41-36, so he and Chi trade buckets. Oh, that's a move. Markel Brown gives it off for Roten. Roten, wild shot, and they say he was fouled. I think Anthony Brown might have picked that up. Yes. Yeah, Anthony Brown whistled for the personal, so Roten will shoot two at the line. Hasn't done well there yet tonight. He's 0 of 4. So by the law of averages, he's bound to make a couple here, right, Tony? Yeah. First one is up and good. Anthony Brown picked up the personal, but that's thanks to uh, Mellow Trimble, who got beat by a step there. Anthony tried to help out and then had to do the reach out. So sometimes your teammate can get you in trouble, and that's what happened there to Anthony Brown. So Roten steps to the line and makes them both. So he's now 2 of 6 from the line. They're now 7 of 11 after his 0 for 4 start. So 7 straight free throws now from Rio Grande Valley since... Roten missed the first four he had taken. Here's Perry Jones. That's shot blocked. Twice he's had a shot blocked by Chi. And a long, hard outlet pass to Chi through his hands out of bounds, so a turnover. 15 turnovers in the first half so far. Eight by Iowa, seven by Rio Grande Valley, so it hasn't been an artistic ball game for sure. Entry pass for Emil Jefferson back to the basket. Now into the lane, left sweeping hook, softly falls in. 43-38, the lead back to five for Iowa. Half dozen now for Emil. Roten gets in close, can't finish. Second try though, got his own miss and laid it up and in. Here's Trimble. Gets a ball screen from Bryson. And there's a nice alert play by Trimble. And a quick outlet, and Markel Brown on an alley-oop from half court from Roten lays it up and in. I mean, blank, blank. That's how quick you better get back. he got to identify that. That's even after a made basket that time. There's Jefferson. Jefferson on a hook shot. This time over the left shoulder, no good. Pretty sure Chris Walker got a piece of that, it looked like, from my angle. Roten, hard drive to the basket. Can't finish, and that's going to be... I thought that was going to be a foul on Roten. What are they calling that? They say Jefferson whistled for the personal foul. Uh, he's not arguing. You know, Mill will show you that expression that he wasn't too happy about it. He's not. He's agreeing with the official over there. So, no doubt about that one. 
Emil will have that unique look if he's not happy. <laughs> and a whistle there, and I wasn't sure. Delay of game on the Vipers. I think Markel Brown whistle for delay of game. Here's a three by Markel, shot no good. And There's a foul, come on. That should have been a foul on Walker. No call, and this is Brown on a drive. Pulls up, 16 footers, good. I don't mind letting him play a little bit, but my goodness, when you're going straight up a rebound and get crammed from behind, you just got to call that one. 47-42, the lead goes back to five for Iowa. Now it's Walker. Stands with it, hands off for Hardy. And now a right wing three on the way, and that one's knocked down by Craig Victor. Not the most likely of three-point shooters out there no. for the Vipers, but he splashed the net there. And it's a two-point game, John. Here's Bryson. He lines up a three. That's way off Whoa. the mark. About a foot long. Markel Brown gives it off for Roten. Chance for the Vipers to tie or take the lead with a three. And a body hits the floor, and that was Walker. He just got his feet tangled up with... Emil Jefferson, so Jefferson picks up a cheap one. There you see it there. It wasn't nothing intentional. So Perry Jones heads to the bench. Sean Williams back out there. 3.02 to play here in the second quarter. I was led by as many as 10. The Vipers had the quick four-point lead in the first opening quarter, but only one lead change and one tie. That was very early in the ball game, so the Vipers chance to tie or take the lead since the first time since the opening minutes. There's Roten on the top of the key. Hard drive. Shot up. No good. And wow. offensive rebound and put back. No good. Sean Ran Williams down in the corner contest. by Trimble. Mello has it stripped away. And it'll be Iowa ball after the timeout. 2.45 to go here in the first half. The Wolves clinging to a two-point lead, 47-45 over the Vipers. More Iowa Wolves basketball after this break. The Diamond Center is Des Moines' best-kept secret, and they're a proud partner of Iowa Wolves. He knocks it down. Yep, it's good to see that, Sean. Usually when he's left open like that, pretty darn good shooter. So the lead back to five, 50-45. to 45. Speaking, that was that first three that Iowa's made in the ball game after being over 10. Inside they go for Anawaku. His turnaround jump shot no good. Brown with the rebound. Here comes Anthony Brown. Behind the back dribble gives it off for Williams. Thought about the three. Gives it instead to Anthony Brown. Now he will shoot the three in the corner. And Sean Williams was fouled by Victor. Victor's not happy with that. <laughs> on a three-point shot attempt. I didn't get the angle because of some bodies in front of us. So well, Coach Coach Roth had kind of screened us out a little bit, but Sean Williams at the line to shoot three. Well, keep up with all things Wolves, including game schedules, special ticket offers, promotions, and team news. That's all at iowawolves.com. Iowa Wolves basketball coming back up next Sunday on the Faith and Family Night. Check it out, iowawolves.com. And, of course, only, I think, after this, five home games left for the Iowa Wolves. So you want to make it out to a game, make sure... You check it out very, very soon, unless they get to the postseason. Williams missed the first of three free throws. Two more upcoming, and misses the second. So let's see if Sean can get one of three here as he takes a little bit of time. They'll give him a delay of game here if he doesn't get back to the line. So Williams' third free throw is up and good. So... One out of three that time for Williams, 51-45. Anawaku has it out front. Gives it off for Markel Brown, and Bryson whistle for the personal. It's all the physical play. That was no doubt a foul. <laughs> a little reach in. That's a whistle. Team foul number five, so Markel will head to the line to shoot two. So both 2 teams 0 2 to go here in the half. Both teams will be in the bonus. Again, this buds for you. Iowa Wolves fans, Budweiser, the MVP of beers, another proud sponsor of Iowa Wolves basketball, and now Rio Grande returns the favor with a clank off the first free throw. And Markel Brown, the best shooter on the floor for RGV tonight, misses the first of two. 
And the second one also no good. Onowaku's tip follow no good. And Trimble finally secures the rebound. So Mello across the timeline for Iowa. Defended by Markel Brown closely near midcourt. Now Sean Williams has it. Patton with his back to the basket along the baseline. Patton off the window, no good. Sean Williams finds it, fades away, and knocks it down. The coach loved that effort there as he gives him a high five as he's walking past him, Coach Roth. There's Roten, Anawaku, no. And Anawaku saves it to Markel Brown in the corner. Three up, no good. Now Trimble. Over to Williams. He's feeling it. Three on the way. Off the mark. No good. Rebound Brown. Markell outlets to Roten. Roten has it left side. He'll drive it. Lost the handle. It's two on one the other way. It's Trimble. Behind the back. Oh! No. Brown with a two-hand flush after the fake. And then the no-look pass by yeah. Mello Trimble. A little shake and bake there. Fake once. Nah, here it goes. Lead Loved back it. to ten. Under a minute to go. 8-0 run by the Wolves. Brown goes right at Trimble. Little push off, no call. Brown got the rebound. Wow, there was an attack. Oh, I agree. <laughs> he was well, hacked. They, Markel Brown was definitely hit. Sean Williams going to call for foul. I didn't know who did it, but boy, Mark, somebody came across him that time. So Markel Brown will go back to the line to shoot two. The lead now 10 again for the Wolves. I believe that's their largest. Yes. Ties it for the largest lead early. Markell with 20 points here in the first half. Has six rebounds as well. Make it 21 as he makes the first free throw. There you see the little discard by Brown. No call. RGV, they've gotten five offensive rebounds here in the first half. And the second free throw by Brown is also good. Now Sean Williams brings it across the timeline for Iowa. Over to Mello. Has oh. it poked away by Brown. Here comes Markel Brown the other way. And a foul. That's before the count, count the it. basket. Patton chasing down the ball. And they're going to talk about whether maybe the basket should have counted. He got him on the dribble, not on the shot. And I mean, back in the days, they'd give you that, that continuation. Not that rules out now, so... I still think they're going to count it. Yeah. He... So one shot. So Markel Brown at the line to shoot one. The basket does count. The lead down to six. And make it five. So Markel Brown, kind of a one-man team here so yeah. far in the first half. Well, I would probably add to that, too, with the turnovers. I mean, you can't keep turning the ball over. Double figures again here in the first half alone. About a second-and-a-half differential here. Trimble gets a screen out top. Now Mello driving to the bucket, and he is fouled. Three on the shot clock. Got to know where you're at defensively. and. Two shots for Mello Trimble. You send the, one of the top free throw shooters shooting 89% from the free throw line, fifth in the G League. Mello Trimble the line, so that's pretty usual. Two free points. Trimble knocks down the first. Washburn going to check in for the final 4.9 to keep Sean Williams out of any foul trouble. Well, and to put another on the ball guard defender, defender out yeah. there. 4.9 seconds to go in the half. The lead is currently six. Trimble's second free throw still to come. And that one's up and good. So the lead back to seven. And Trimble lost his footing. Now Roten high off the glass. Can't get it to go. And the follow-up no good. Wouldn't have counted anyway. So Iowa led it all the way except for just a handful of seconds early, Tony. And they lead it at the half here. 57-50. More Wolves basketball, and the Clippers have the basketball out of the halftime break. Anawaku gives it back for Markel Brown, and he knocks down a three, picks up right where he left off. He's got 28 here in the ball game. I don't know how much better defense you could play. I mean, that was Slicing with his hand straight up, right over the top. Brown's had a solid ball game. 
9 of 13 from the field. Anthony Brown on a pull-up jump shot. No good. Chi comes away with it. Here comes Zo Chi into the corner for Roten. Now Mark, or no, there's Roten down the lane over to Chi. Missed, taps it in on the back side of the rim. And all of so a, a quick five points and that seven point halftime lead down to two, just like that. Oh, just a telegraph pass. Knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Iowa along the baseline left. Iowa had nine first half turnovers, eight by Rio Grande Valley. But that one, you can just see that one come all back. There's Emil Jefferson with it up top for Patton. Now it's Bryson. Bryson on a tough little floater at the left elbow. It's good chi. So I'm working on that shot in the pregame. You see these guys doing all little things like that. He was really working hard at that one. Markel Brown, a late whistle as he was falling off up top of the key. Now drives by Trimble at the rim. Finger rolls good. Nice hard drive that time by Roten. This time he finishes to give him eight points in the ball game. Here's Anthony Brown, top of the key. Bounce pass inside for Jefferson. Emil turns, faces up. Now gets into the oh, nice block by Chi. Those long arms of that seven foot one center. That's about three or four blocks for him now in this ball game. Here's Brown. Matched Fourth. up with Bryson. In for Anawaku. Now Roten on a little wraparound, and he lays it in. Yeah, right at the rim again. Rio Grande Valley going to their strength, which is attacking. And Iowa not able to stop him in the paint. It's a 9-2 run to start the second half for the Vipers. Here's Patton. Chi uh, again. Shot blocked by Chi. Jefferson runs it down, though. Skip pass for Bryson. Into the corner it goes. Trimble's three on the way. No good. Jefferson tip up. No good. And into the hands of Julian Lewis. Here come the Vipers with a chance for the lead. Brown. Shot fake. Got his man in the air over to Roten. Now it's Chi. Three on the way. Top of the key. No good. And Brown with an offensive rebound. Flips it to Anawaku for the lay-in. Timeout called by Coach Roth. It's a full. So two and a half minutes in. The Vipers have regained the lead. An 11-2 run, 61-59, they lead it. More Wolves basketball after this timeout. Here, in this league, we're not okay with strong. We go stronger. We don't settle for fast. Well, the Vipers pick up right where they left off. A quick bucket in transition after the steal on the other end. Markel Brown with his 30th points of the ball game, Tony. And it's a 13-2 run to start the second half for the Vipers. And Chi has had a lot to do with it. Five block shots and two of them in this quarter has triggered some of the comeback. Patton steps out and knocks down a three ball straight away. Hopefully that'll stop the bleeding here. Roten on a hard drive baseline. Into the corner for Lewis. Lewis on a drive, hangs in the air, can't quite finish. Trimble's going to be fouled by Anawaku. <laughs> that's a that's a that's, that's a, a tough body to run into. <laughs> that's a Volkswagen hitting a tank. That's what that looked like. Anawaku is put together. Yeah. And watch the replay. Yeah, he just kind of stuck his arm out a little bit to slow Trimble down, yeah. stopped him dead in his tracks. Iowa chance to regain the lead. Here's Trimble along the baseline. Gives it off for Patton. Nice wraparound pass for Bryson. His three is good. Yeah, good start to the second half for Bryson. Kind of quiet in the first half, but five points here in the third quarter to give the Wolves the lead. The third lead change in the ball game now. Markel Brown wow. a tough runner. Again, Bryson played pretty good defense there, and yet, I mean, that's 32 points, and Mark Hill is just a tough, tough matchup here for anybody. Trimble turns the corner, hangs in the air. Got his own floater to go. So now we're kind of going back and forth with the lead changes. More of them here in this last minute of play than we had in the first half. So an 8-2 run here by Iowa. Here's Roten. Has it's, it poked oh, away. Yeah, I think it's I a think bad angle got, by the official. They got Trimble. No, Patton reached in and knocked it away cleanly, oh, yeah. but they say Trimble bodied up. Roten. Okay, I thought they called that on Patton. I'm like, how could you see that? 
Onuaku gets it. And gives it off for Roten. Let's see if Roten drives it. He does. Onuaku on a pull-up, knocks it down. A good two-man game there. A little 14-footer just outside the lane by Onuaku. Eight points now for him in the ball game. Over to Brown in the corner. His three on the way, no good. Chi with the rebound. Boy, he makes Jefferson look small, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Roten, bounce pass for Onuaku. Can't hold on. Up ahead for Anthony Brown. Brown has it poked away. Great hustle there by Lewis to poke it away from behind. Yeah, that turnover in the, by the Vipers. That's the guard putting the ball in the wrong spot for a big guy cutting through the lane. Roten put it down by the below the knees and big guy running through the lane like that. That's a tough place for them to catch and make something happen. Trimble will trigger in. Finds Patton. Now gets it right back. Mello in the corner. is going to be double teamed. And they find Jefferson underneath. Left-hand layup is good. Well, Jefferson a bucket away from matching another double-double. He has 10 rebounds. That's his eighth point of the ball game now for the Iowa Wolves. 69-67, Iowa out front. Here's Brown. And oh. Brown with a sweet alley-oop to Anawaku, who finishes with the right hand. Well, Brown, seven rebounds. He shows he's got a little unselfishness to him with an assist that time. And it was a showtime assist to Anawaku. Millsap will check in at the next dead ball. Iowa slow to get into their set here. Now Anthony Brown with it. Ten on the shot clock. Brown just fires a long three. Bad possession by Iowa. And they compound it by giving up a layup on the other end. Yep. The run outs off of turnovers and missed shots. And Rio Grande Valley again makes him pay. It's a broken record with them. 71-69. Vipers lead it. Trimble. Back pass for Brown. Three on the way. No. Oh, and boy. That's a root out foul. <laughs> she, she, what did I do? <laughs> she with the, kept the block out going as the ball came off the rim and knocked Jefferson down. So Iowa will maintain possession. Side out. So Millsap in for Bryson. Iowa had a substitution come in. I don't know if that was should have been allowed. I don't think the officials realized it. As Patton comes in for... Well, Patton was in Bright, there. Okay, so Bryson, Wilson came, Wilson came in, in for, for Bryson. Bryson. Yeah. But he was waiting at the scores table. Okay. That was, there's okay. nothing wrong with that. And it comes for Trimble. Chance to tie or take the lead with a three here for Iowa. Now it's Millsap. Reball on the way is good. Elijah. That's a good sign for Elijah there as he knocks down the jump shot. Ten minutes, ten points for Elijah. Elijah offensively here tonight. Just over ten minutes to play. RJ Hunter with the ball. Nice pass for Walker. And Walker with bad intentions fouled at the rim. And I think Elijah is going to think twice about challenging next time because he's under the basket trying to get his wits back. Right, and that. his teeth. <laughs> Well, I think he took an elbow on the uh, way up just inadvertently by Walker as he attacked the rim. Perry Jones set the check in as well here on the next dead ball. Roten going over to Tykes with Elijah and saying, man, <laughs> shouldn't have done that. <laughs> First free throw up and good by Walker. Chris Walker, 6'9 forward, played at the University of Florida. Comes off the bench for head coach Matt Brazzi. Walker's second free throw. And that one's good as well. So a one-point lead back in possession of the Vipers. Here's Mello off a couple high ball screens. Mello on a high wow. floater off the rim. Nice Pretty. play there. That's sweet. That's a lot of work there. That just doesn't come natural. That's a lot of work on, on that skill set. Iowa leads it by one. Davis. On a bounce pass inside, an easy flush by Walker. Well, they're using that two-man game to perfection here. That's about three or four of them right there, the two-man game in the paint, and some easy flushes for the Vipers as we go back and forth here in the third quarter. Here's Millsap. Pulls up, lets it go, splashes the net 18 feet away. Some mismatches on both ends of the floor offensively. Now Hunter with it. 
Puts it on the floor over to Chi. Chi through the lane, and that's got to be a foul. He was bear hugged by Perry Jones. I thought they were going to dance there for a minute the way Perry grabbed him. I thought they were going to be dance partners. I can't believe the whistle took that long. And Perry reached around, tried to knock it away from behind. I'm going to say two shots. I think they're going to review it. Yeah. Questioning whether it's a two-shot foul, just a 30-second timeout. The Wolves are proud to partner with Capital Orthopedics and Sports Medicine as their official team doctors. If you get injured on or off the court, they will get you back into the game. Visit dsmcapitalortho.com. That's dsmcapitalortho.com. Another proud sponsor of Iowa Wolves basketball. Again, directly the challenge worked. <laughs> Froze G. He isn't used to shooting from 15. He likes that 20-22-footer. So Chi, second free throw, no good. Gets his own rebound and flushes home the follow. Oh, he's good at the point blank one, too. <laughs> but that's this bad, just bad skill set on the rebound. I mean, how can a free throw shooter get all the way into the paint to get that rebound and flush it? No Nobody in front. No one stepped in front of Chi to block him out. Vipers lead it by one. Millsap around the defender. Tough shot, no good. Chi with the rebound. Outlet for Brown. Markel Brown fouled by Trimble. He'll shoot two. And again, miss shot. Look what happens. Three seconds at the rim the other way. That's how good they are at that. Well, I've been more and more impressed as this game's gone on with Zo Chi. Five team fouls on Iowa. Only two by the Vipers with 4.28 to go in this third quarter. So there'll be a free throw shooting contest if Iowa doesn't stand up, play strong stand up defense right now. The Vipers can take advantage of that at the charity strike. So Markel Brown to shoot two. First one is up and good. We'll get in the game with Rockstar Satellite, your local direct TV expert for your home or business. Call 262-STAR. Visit rockstarsatellite.com. Another proud sponsor of Iowa Wolves basketball. Listening tonight on 1460 KXNO here in Des Moines in central Iowa and on Facebook Live. So Brown with 34 points here in the ballgame. At 25 at the half. Here's Anthony Brown. He's been cold here in the second mm -hmm. half. And Jefferson and I believe a foul on Jefferson as he's laying on the ground. Kevin Fahey, the crew chief, comes over to discuss. And they're going to look at it. I think. Well on his way. He also has nine rebounds in the ball game. So, I mean, he's been playing. From the start, Tony, he's been looking for points. Yep. And he's been finding them. Both free throws good. The lead is five now for the Vipers, their largest of the game. Millsap has it left of the key. And a blocking foul on Chi. <laughs> He's had a couple of cheap fouls. I mean, it, I mean, it's his own fault. I mean, but right in front of the official, you just can't do that. He's kind of root, hands up, but rooting out. So, <laughs> well, you saw it on the replay there. His yeah. feet were still both yeah. moving as he yeah. just kind of ushered Millsap out of bounds. That's his third personal foul, though. Here's Perry Jones back for Mello. Trimble. Double teamed off the ball screen. They swing it around. Extra pass. Anthony Brown's three from the right corner is good. That's that was, a big shot for Iowa. That was good flow to that. That's what made that work. And Anthony Brown finished with good quick passing by Iowa. Rio Grande couldn't catch up defensively. There's Walker with it out top. Now it's Hardy. Now they find Chi about 18 feet away, left wing. Isolated on Perry Jones. Chi hangs in the air and he is fouled. Well, he's a handful right now for Iowa. Well, you see what Rio Grande's change of offensive strategy with Chi, though. They've taken him away from that perimeter and kind of playing him to post up. And I don't know if Iowa, other than maybe Patton, is anybody to stand up straight up with him. And Chi's using that. I don't know what else I could do. I'm, I'm, I'm matched here. So Chi's second free throw rattles in. And the lead back to four for RGV. 83-79, the Vipers lead it. 3.20 to go here in the third. Millsap drives baseline, spins, has it taken away by Hunter. 
Hunter down the middle of the floor. Bounce pass for Hardy. Hardy gets it back for Hunter. Now bounce pass inside for Walker, and that's a travel. Oh, jump ball call. They call a jump. I don't know if that was a jump ball. It looked like it would tap and go, but. So it's going to be. Looks like Walker was tied up with Perry Jones. Victor will check in, gives, giving Zoe Chi a break. He looks gassed. <laughs> he looks a little worn down. <laughs> yeah. What the heck, guys? So they'll try and get guys set around the circle here. And, and now another whistle. Everybody. See if Perry can back tap it here for Emil Jefferson. And he does. So Iowa basketball trailing four. Here's Trimble with it. Nice crossover oh. dribble by Mello. And he is fouled. Let's see, is it Davis? And it is Davis whistle for the personal. Kyle Davis. Davis did a pretty good job of getting back at it. But he was, boy, he was beaten badly on the little crossover there to the left. And got back in there, but too much body gets the personal as Justin Patton will get set to check in. Boy, he had a really good first quarter and a half and then he's been kind of on the bench since then Let's see if he can get back to Is Anthony Brown's gonna take no it's Emil Jefferson I was wondering what's going on here so Jefferson will get a break Patton back out there and without Chi on the floor Patton will have a little size advantage underneath and Mello with a soft finish to that free throw got one of two so it's a three-point lead for the Vipers just under three minutes to go here in the third quarter Hunter working out front. Oh, beautiful pass to Walker. So a five-point lead now. Walker just uncontested layup. Iowa just a little slow defensively. Trimble standing dribble out front. Gives it off for Brown. Now it's Perry Jones. Inside it goes for Patton. Patton on the faceup. Defended by Victor. Step back. Jumper, no good. They're just not getting the shots they want, Tony. Nope. A lot of standing around. Davis drops it off. Hunter's three on the way, no good. Perry Jones high for the rebound. Here comes Iowa in transition. Back for Millsap. Thought about a three instead. Back for Trimble. Mello lets That's it off. go. <laughs> and that one, air ball. Well, you could tell that was off when it left his hands. And I'm like, what was that? So Trimble out, Washburn in. Sean Williams will replace Perry Jones. The body language on a lot of these Wolves players. Perry Jones is right there. Was one of them. It just looked like I almost, don't really want to be out uninterested there. look by a couple of these guys tonight, especially here in the second half. Wow. I you saw the same thing I saw walking by. It's like that doesn't look good. Here's Hunter. Tough drive, kisses it off the glass, got by Millsap. Kid from Georgia State, really working hard and wanting to be part of this. You can, he is one guy that's going to give 100%, whether it's good or bad, he's out there. There's Millsap, defended by Davis. Patton flashes to the high post, and the ball swatted away. Stolen into the hands of Hunter. Chance to build on a seven-point lead. Hunter pops a three. Off the mark, no good. Williams lost it out of bounds. It'll stay with RGV. And that's going to bring Markel Brown back into the game. <laughs> going to give Hardy a rest. Brown doesn't take many minutes off. <laughs> and he should not. No. <laughs> Especially with the lack of roster tonight. They've got three guys up there with the... Rockets, so not here tonight. Here's Davis. Kicks it to Hunter. Three on the way is good. Quick the release lead is there. ten. And Hunter's come off the bench now and nine points for Hunter. Washman. Back pass for Williams. Now Millsap. Millsap on a drive. Millsap fouled and let's see who they get. It's Davis again. So Millsap will step to the free throw line with 46 seconds to go in the quarter. Chance to cut into this 10-point Viper lead. It was a 7-point Wolves lead at the half, so doing the math, that's a 17-point swing here in the quarter, Tony. And Rio Grande won game one here on January 24th, 124 to 114. They won at Rio Grande, 119 to 111. And really 
kind of in the same similar style that one big run in a quarter and then they just kept their you know that once they get that lead they just don't relinquish it and it's kind of the same program playbook to this one so far here in the third quarter good tight first half they've down seven and now dominating this third quarter and Millsap makes two free throws cuts the lead to eight Millsap's been you think quiet but he's got 14 points quietly off the bench and they're looking for Hunter back pass for Victor Victor gives it off Hunter again working top of the key Hunter gets to the rim lays it off glass and in well, he's just really carried some offensive load here in this late part of the third quarter as he goes to 11 points in the ball game and the lead back to 10 Two and a half second differential. Standing dribble up top for Washburn. Here's Patton, catches, shoots, three, corner, no. Davis with the rebound, still seven seconds to work with. Long pass from Markel Brown. Brown drives the baseline, lays it up, can't finish. And that's the end of the third quarter. Well, it was a seven point lead for the Wolves at the half. It's a 10 point lead for the Vipers after three. 92-82, more Wolves basketball after this break. Welcome to NBA G League Weekly. I'm Brandon Wellington, and this is Trending, the first ever NBA G League international challenge between G League USA and the Mexico national team was a big hit. To shoot three here at the line. Well, Markel Brown leading all players in the game with 36 points on 11 of 16 shoot the line, 10 for on. Anuaku and 10 for Roten and then off the bench RJ Hunter what a spark he was in the third he has 11 points and Chris Walker with 10 off the bench for the Wolves Justin Brown with 15 Elijah Millsap off the bench with 14 and 11 for Mello Trimble but uh, it hasn't been you know we we're talking about how Markell was carrying the team by himself all oh, there's a double figures Iowa has four altogether Williams makes one of the first two his third upcoming Iowa's now 14 of 20 at the line 70% as a team. John Williams, two for five. And make it three for six. So the lead back down to eight. Again, and get some stops here. Markel Brown on the right wing. Into the paint, lays it off the glass, no good. And a follow Damn. on Oaku. With the putback, but they set a loose ball foul prior to the so it'll be a side out here for RGV. Fortunate call there for Iowa. Could have been an and one. Has it out front for RGV. Hands to Brown. Markel Brown. Over to Hunter. Hunter gets a ball screen. Pops. Three ball. More high for the rebound. Here comes Moore across the timeline. Back pass for Williams. Now it's Millsap. Elijah, John Williams, now back for Millsap. He'll shoot the three and it's blocked. Hunter. Hunter got a hand, blocked the three ball. Here's Markel Brown for three, it's off the mark. Onowaku got away with a push. Wow, yeah, slightly. Offensive rebound for Onowaku and a tie up. No, they say play on. Four on the shot clock, Davis. Over to Hunter, quick release, three, front rim, no good. And Patton with the rebound. Brian Walker's causing a lot of havoc in the paint. Look at Washman right by Davis for the easy lay -in. I think Iowa needs to do a little more of that. A lot yeah. of these front court players have been on the floor for a long time. Yeah, attack, attack. I mean, that's what the, the, got the Vipers elite is playing strong under the rim. Iowa needs to do that too. A lot of perimeter passing instead of doing what Washman did right there. Got to change it up once in a while if it's not working. Here's Hunter. Three on the way. No good. Well, he can keep good contest those. by Patton. Inside they go to Patton. And that's a foul on Hunter. Well, we got an explosion there. <laughs> bodies all over the floor on that one. Three bodies hit the floor on that play. <laughs> I think Hunter might have taken the worst of that one as slowly as he got up. <laughs> taking a couple of breaths. Be a side out. And Hunter... Whistle for the personal. That's his fourth personal foul as he takes a seat. Lewis back out there for RGV. Marquise Moore has it. 
Now it's Washman, left side. Washman around a ball screen. Millsap lines up a three, top of the key, no. Oh, Williams, Williams got away, got with, away a with a push. <laughs> Marquis Moore over to Patton. And Millsap on a drive to the basket. Reverse layup, no, but a foul called. I like that. Millsap kind of hesitated. I'm like, no, keep going. And he finally took off and draws the two shots there. But boy, at first I thought he changed his mind and was going to quit going to the rim. So Millsap at the line to shoot two. Chance to cut it to four, Tony. Hey, by the way, Hispanic Heritage Night presented by Wells Fargo was on Friday, March 16th when the uh, Wolves take on the Austin Spurs in a 7 o'clock tip, so check that out. But again, Sunday, March 4th is Faith and Family presented by Service Legends as the Iowa Wolves take on the Erie Bayhawks at the special 3 o'clock start with the content following. And you can follow us and like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Snapchat at IA Wolves. Go to IAWolves.com for more information or come on down to the well on ball game day. Millsap misses the second, so the lead is five. 92-87. They've cut that 10-point lead in half here starting the fourth quarter. Davis lines up a three. No good. And the rebound for Millsap. And now Rio Grande, like four, five, threes. They've settled for shots when they with what was working was attacking. Now they're settling. But of course, a couple of Markel Brown on. Oh, he's out there. They haven't got him the ball in his hands. Williams lines up the three ball off the mark. No good. Now Markel Brown has it on the left wing. Lewis looks to drive it. Lewis gets into the lane. Lost it on the way up. And it's going to go back to Iowa. Roten comes back into the ball game, as does Chi. Chi was gassed when he went out. He had a brilliant third quarter, though. Much like that first quarter and a half that Justin Patton had for the Iowa Wolves. But Patton's been pretty quiet since then and hasn't played a lot of minutes here in the second half, as many as he did in the first. Of course, he's on that, still on that minute limitation. So, well, Patton will come back around the five and a half, six minute mark. There's Emil Jefferson matched up with the smaller Roten. He's been quiet, too. In this Jefferson ball game. gets it back, drives it hard. Left hand lay-in is good. We're talking about his double-double. He just got it with his 10th point and 11 rebounds. But, yeah, six points and 10 rebounds quickly in this ball game. Back to a one-possession game, 92-89. Vipers on top. Here's Markel Brown. 10 on the shot clock. Brown gets a ball screen from Chi. Gets into the body of Williams, throws it up and knocks it in. Boy, Markel Brown has been unguardable here in this ball game. 38 points going back to the line. Good defense by Williams. Yeah. Took the contact, then just floated it up near the front of the rim, and it fell in. He's the strongest, the tallest, the big. I mean, nothing about him shows. He's toughest to guard out there, though. That is a definite. He knows how to use that quickness. And he's a quick shooter. He doesn't give you if you if you don't if you're not on him, that shot's off. So he's very adept in getting that quick shot. There's more good recovery there by Roten. Jefferson now matched up with Chi. Millsap on a drive. Millsap back to Jefferson. Extra pass for Moore. He wasn't quite ready for it. Now Marquise drives it. Spins. Hangs. Wow. Got it to go. Should have got a, maybe an and one. A lot of contact with the body, but good hang in the air by Moore to get himself ready for that shot. 95-91. Walker with it out front. Waiting for Markel Brown who comes to get it. Lost the handle and thrown away. Good bounce pass up ahead for Millsap. Drops it off for Jefferson, and he's fouled by Chi. So Emil Jefferson to the line to shoot two. And that's the fourth foul on Chi now, if that is on him, and it is. Yeah. Boy, that's just a little bit of contact there by Chi. Hands almost straight up, but he came down just enough on Jefferson to pick up the foul. Well, I was starting to attack more, and the Vipers were starting to settle for threes, and now the game's kind of flipped a little bit toward the Iowa Wolves, John. So I just understand why you changed the concept of what's making you good, like the Vipers had, attacking, and change it to three-point shooting. R.J. Hunter now checking back into the game. 
And Jefferson misses the first of two. Markel Still could make it a one possession game with the second free throw. See what the Wolves can do with Markel Brown having a seat on the bench here for at least a minute or so until probably the next timeout. Second free throw by Emil is good, so it's a three point by Piper lead, 95 92, 720 to go here in the ballgame. Roten over to Chi. Chi almost lost it, now finds Roten. Roten looks to drive it. Over to Hunter, back to Roten. He'll try a three, front rim, no. Williams with the rebound. Here comes Millsap the other way. Elijah on a hard drive. Has it poked away and out of bounds off of the Vipers. And a timeout on the floor. 6.57 to go here in the fourth quarter. It'll be Wolves basketball along the baseline when we come back. 95-92, the Vipers lead it. More Wolves basketball after this break. Play NBA G League Fantasy now to win weekly and grand prizes, like a trip to NBA All-Star Weekend for free at NBAGLeague.com slash fantasy. Here, in this league, we're not okay. Walker nearly lost the handle. Picks it up, now finds Davis, eight on the shot clock. Kicks it over to Roten. Roten on a drive. Roten hangs in the air and finishes. Nice drive there. So the lead back to five, 97-92. Roten's hit his last three shots. He's he had a tough early ball game, but now it's 12 points in the ball game. Here's Marquise Moore. Skip pass to a wide open Wes Washman. Three is up and no good. And Jefferson battling keeps it alive and into the hands of Wes Washman. How is that not a come ball? on? Marquise Moore. Washman was clearly fouled. No Four call. seconds. West pulls up three on the way. Oh. It's good. Well, we'll take that. West showing a little fire there. Seven for West. Two point ball game again. 97 95. Vipers leading. Wow. Davis. Still scratching my head on that no call. Unbelievable. Well, Garth Brooks had a song that said uh, some of God's greatest gifts were unanswered prayers. <laughs> yeah. And here goes on. Wolves with a chance to tie or take the lead and after the miss. Here's Williams up ahead for Jefferson. You need ball movement here, though. You got too many guys standing with the ball. Everybody's standing, period. Williams steps into a baseline jumper, and we're tied at 97. John Williams to double figures now with 10 points. Well, and it's been the second unit, Tony. Yeah. Well, they came out, and then it's defense changing to offense, though, John. They've stepped it up on the defensive end. Hunter has it out front. Hunter. I mean, that's been fun to watch now. Hunter and Millsap. They have been really battling. Chi gives it off for Walker. Walker going to drive it. Gives it off for Lewis. Lewis lost a handle. Marquise Moore takes it away. Moore the other way. Gives it off Jefferson. Jefferson lays it in. The Wolves lead by two. Wow. It ain't fixed, don't change it, coach. You got some subs coming in. I like what this unit's doing. Oh, oh Washman just swats. Whoa. Hunter. Up ahead, it's Jefferson. Back pass, Millsap. Oh, Out about a three. Washman left open. He'll shoot it. Good. Oh, Washman. Yeah. Washman's got three. his crowd on his feet right now. Timeout called. We'll step away. 102 97. The Wolves have woken up. They lead it by five. 4.23 to go. More Wolves basketball after this. Luxor Limousines and Coach Buses is the premier transportation company in Des Moines. Luxor offers black car service, sprinter and passenger vans, limos, and the best. Hunter will try a three, and that's no good. And the man who's turned this ball game around, Wes Washman, with the rebound. Boy, 20 to 5, Iowa's outscored the Vipers here in the fourth quarter after being outscored 42 to 25 in the quarter before. If you don't think this game can change in a heartbeat, Waters can tell you that. There's Patton isolated along the right baseline. Shot up no that? good. Awkward looking shot there. I don't know if he got hit or took a bad st- Davis hangs. Tough shot, no good. Anawaku there though to put it in. Patton hit the deck. I think Patton hit been challenging for the ball, kind of got tangled up. Well, Iowa, up by, they've got him on the run right now. Patton pulls, or Washman down the jump shot. He is red hot. Yeah, the bench, as you talk about, Washburn, Millsap, and Williams, they all three were in double figures, 12 by Washburn. He's changed this game in the fourth quarter. 
Well, they're denying Hunter the ball. Hunter with a tough shot off the window. That's good. That's 13 for Hunter. Right now, Millsap, Millsap with the slight edge, and that's why the Wolves have a slight edge. There's Washman over to Williams. Williams thought about a three. Back to Wes, looking to drive. Got his man in the air. Great oh! find underneath for Millsap. And he's, Mello was at the scorers to come in, and Coach Ross says, no, we're going to leave Wes out there to finish it up. And there's Millsap with the rebound. I like Millsap's game tonight, but Wes started the game. Wow. Back pass for Anthony Brown. He got Millsap open on the wing. Brown lost the handle. Yeah, he should have passed that one out. And a steal by Washburn, and they're going to say a foul. <laughs> and this is the crowd favorite. Well, it's easy to be the crowd favorite from you and I, but Wes, the way he's played in his fourth quarter, that is not what the crowd wanted. Iowa again, next home game, Sunday, March 4th, Erie, 3 o'clock tip, followed by the Faith and Family Concert, presented by Service Legends, post-game concert by Plum. So Hunter makes the first of two free throws, draws the Vipers to within four, 2.08 to play. Iowa needs this win tonight. Oklahoma City, it looks like, is getting set to lose tonight to Austin, and that's why Rio Grande needs the victory to keep up with Austin. So both these teams fighting for position within their divisions here in the G League tonight. Here's Washman. Gives it off for Williams. Three ball straight away. Good! Sean Williams with a huge three. Big plus for the bench tonight. Williams now with 13 points. 109-103. Anuaku gives it off for Hunter. Hunter steps back. Hunter. They swing it around the perimeter. Hunter gets it back. Now it's a drive by Roten. He is fouled. I think Williams is inside the, the circle, though. I think that's why he's going to pick up the foul. And they're going to say, uh, he uh, got, yeah. and Williams was in that restricted area, yeah. so no matter what, it's yeah. going to be called on him. And he was it's, moving, too. So. He's got to get out of the way yeah. and concede the two or foul him. The free throw up and good by Roten, so we're back to a one-possession game, 109-106. Both teams have two timeouts left. Both teams will be shooting the bonus for the rest of the game. Both teams have four team fouls. Here's Williams. Oh, they missed Patton wide open underneath. Millsap's wide open on the wing, and they're not seeing it. He's been red hot, too. Here's Anthony Brown. Three ball. In and out. Won't go. Oh, need some Vipers. defense to stop here. Roten down the left side. Gives it off Hunter. Long three is good. Wow. Hunter's got ice in his veins. Wow. Well, he was to almost take in the that shot. midcourt circle. 30-second timeout. We'll keep it here. Tied at 109. To take that shot at that point, at this point in the ball game, was, I thought, ludicrous. I mean, that's 30 feet. Yeah, that was Steph Curry territory. Yeah. He's confident, though. You can see it. The inbounds pass. Minute 11 to go. Iowa basketball side out. Anthony Brown's kind of struggled tonight about identifying some open looks when he's had the ball in his hand tonight. A couple of times I had Millsap. You saw Patton that one time. Too much dribbling and not enough identifying So at points in this ball game. Well, the two bad possessions they've had, one was with Patton. And one holding the basketball, and one was with Brown playing one on one, and Brown loses the handle again. Yeah, just too much dribbling and one on one. Yeah, they got back in this game and got the lead. Hunter for three, no good. Anuaku don't follow because no one blocked them out. Well, they got back into this game because they moved the ball and played unselfishly. They go right back to it. And now they get the and ball. Now they're in the down right two because Washburn's the one that's been setting all this up offensively. Washman, nice look See? underneath for Pat. There you go. Washman with another assist. Washman's the one that's been breaking down the offense, so he's the one that needs the ball in his hand. He can't stay in front of West. We're tied at 111. Timeout called by RGV to draw one up here. Again, out of that last timeout, Markel Brown, 39 points. Roten has 13. Anawaku with 12. Hunter with 17. Chris Walker with 10. For the Iowa Wolves, 
Six players and seven players in double figures. Hands by Anawaku gets it into the hands of Hunter. Three is up, no good, and they fight for the rebound. Two, two Wolves players had the ball. They fought for the rebound. They gave it back to RTV. Millsap picking up the personal. That's number five on Elijah in the ball game. So Victor will go to the line. As it Markel Brown. Uh, oh, it's actually. Coach Roth wanted a delay of game. It's taken Anawaku forever to get to the line. So Anawaku with a tied at 111, a chance to take the lead here. Underhand free throw up and good. <laughs> Gotta love it. Hey, whatever works, man. Absolutely. Give him credit for not being ashamed of throwing it up underhand. We saw this here the last time he was here. Already in for Roten on that. Second free throw up and good. Made the two of them Rick Berry style. And the Vipers lead at 113-111. Again, both teams will be shooting two as the fouls as a team. But timeout called by Iowa. Iowa, no more timeouts remaining. One by the Vipers remaining. Iowa's next home game Sunday, March 4th against the Erie Bayhawks. And for the Rio Grande Valley Vipers, for all those listening. That's off Anthony Brown out of bounds. Boy, it's just... Now they're going to have to foul immediately. Yeah. I, I just don't know why we're trying to get the ball into Anthony Brown's hands. He hasn't made a shot. Has he made one the whole half? It's been a tough night. He, he picks up the foul. On the they can't stop Washman. Wes has got to be a little bit selfish there, although they've drawn something up. you got to run the play. And, of course, they get the ball in the hands of the man of the night for... <laughs> The Rio Grande Valley Vipers and Markel Brown. He'll go to the line to shoot some more free throws as if he hasn't had enough attempts there. This will be 14 and 15. Brown's first free throw is up and good. Three-point lead for the Vipers. Well, I thought he was headed for 50, but he got he was he, he, he really got everybody else involved around him, and now with his 40th point of the ball game, 11 rebounds, four assists, three steals. He's done it all tonight. And the second free throw up and good. So Iowa needs a quick shot here and then a time. I mean, they don't have a timeout and a foul. Washman drives it. Washman denied at the rim and, and the rebound for the Vipers, and that's going to be the ball game. Foul out front on Hunter. Yep, even the crowd's starting to know. Everybody stuck around. I mean, 90% of this crowd stuck around for this one, and it just looked like a chance, and then all of a sudden... The door shut, and the Vipers are going to win the night. They needed to because Austin won the night. Iowa needed to win the night to at least cut into that, to stay close with Oklahoma City, who lost tonight. Instead, they don't give up any ground, but they don't gain any ground, and now they fall below 500. You know, missed opportunity here for Iowa. They're going to lose their fifth straight, Tony. Yeah. There's Millsap. They went from one of the hottest teams in the league to ice cold. Three at the buzzer doesn't fall in the... Final score here from the Wells Fargo Arena. The Vipers hang on. They defeat the Iowa Wolves. 117-111. If you're listening on 1460 KXNO, stay tuned. We'll have head coach Scott Roth here. here at the uh, For the post-game portion of the broadcast as the team shake hands. 